To remove the radio, I'm going to first start by using a screwdriver and lightly prying up around the shifter area. Pull the handbrake and then disconnect the cigarette lighter. Next, I'm going to put the car in gear, pull out the ashtray, and then remove this outside panel. First by starting at the bottom, pulling it out, and then come in at the top here, these two vents, and pull it out. Down at the bottom here, we need to pull out this light bulb and two connections. This cigarette lighter. At the top here, there's two more connections. Squeeze the tab and pull it out. And then this one, there's a tab at the back. Pull it out and then we can move this out of the way. There are four 10 millimeter bolts that need to be removed in order to take out the radio. So I'm going to use a 10 millimeter socket with an extension. Then I can go ahead and pull out the radio. Disconnect the radio. If your car has JBL audio and you'd like to bypass the JBL amplifier with an aftermarket unit, these are the two connections you have to use back here. And you'd use that with a Toyota stereo wiring harness. I'm going to begin by removing a couple of these screws from the back of the radio. I'm going to remove these four bolts holding the mounting bracket on. Next I'm going to remove the front plate by using a flat screwdriver and undoing these clips. Remove a couple more of these screws from the front of the radio. Once all the screws are removed, I can just take off this front faceplate. Next, I'm going to pull off the top cover. I'm going to pull off the back cover. There's some thermal paste there that goes here. To remove the CD player, there's four screws here that you have to remove. I'm going to pull off the top of the CD player. There is a connector underneath here. There's four more screws here that need to be removed to take out the tape deck. Next, there's this white connector here on the ribbon cable that needs to be removed by pulling it up. And then we can lift out the tape deck. There is one more connector at the bottom here. There's another four more screws here that need to be removed to take out the motherboard. This is the output coming from the tape deck. It leads to this chip which acts as an equalizer and an amplifier amplifying the signal coming from the tape deck and that leads to these two test points right here right and left which I'm going to solder my aux cables to before it goes out to the amplifier. And it's actually easier if you flip it over to solder to these two connections on the back. Test the soldered connections by connecting it to a multimeter. These are the soldered connections on the back of the radio, the left and the right. I'm going to close up the main board now of the radio. Screw in the ground wire. I'm going to install the tape deck. I'm going to make sure to leave this disconnected so that it doesn't cause any hissing sound when I'm playing my auxiliary input. I'm going to connect this guy up here. So at the back, I ran these wires for the auxiliary cable. I'm going to go ahead and replace the rear panel. 
stick the front panel back on, replace a couple of these screws here. So here's the unit, it's all closed up with the brackets installed. I've soldered on a 12 foot extension with a 3.5 millimeter male jack at the end so that I can plug it into an mp3 player. I'm going to connect the connectors at the back. Antenna. Audio connection. I ran my extension wire for the auxiliary cable down the back to the side of the console out here and then I can plug this into my mp3 player. Install the deck. I'm going to reinstall this trim piece here. First, I'm going to connect the clock and then connect the hazards. Put it in gear. Reinstall the cigarette lighter. Reinstall the second 12 volt outlet. Put in the ashtray. To use my new auxiliary input, all I have to do is turn on the radio into FM mode, plug in my phone, it'll automatically override the FM signal, press play, and then make sure my volume's amped up all the way. Works good. Now I can finally throw away this FM transmitter for good.